It's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got the uh, live uh, Viva La Keys cam up here, which is, I believe it's uh, uh, in the Key West area or down that way. And uh, actually, this is the live seaweed cam, I think. So lots of seaweed out there, but I thought it was a pretty cool shot with the uh, contrasting colors and a whole bunch of tasty snappers checking us out as well. All right. That's a cam you can view anytime. Again, it's called the uh, Biba, the Keys cam. It's a live cam. Ought we see some really cool fish on there. In fact, if you just scroll back here, you can see this morning, uh, you can see uh, a lot of the predatory fish kind of roaming around. Those are uh, snappers, actually. Uh, but Kerbali jacks, you can see roaming around there. And that looks like it's the evening, actually. Uh, okay, we're not here to talk about fish cams and stuff, but it is one of the cooler cams in Florida. Uh, Lower Keys underwater live stream, if you get a chance to check it out. Of course, you know, um, oh, by the way, I'm feeling a little bit better. I think this is like a seven day head cold is what I had. Uh, not quite sure uh, what variety it was, but didn't care and uh, seemed to be quite well right now. Uh, so uh, thanks for all the well wishes out there for the last few days. I appreciate it. And it doesn't hurt to talk right now. So you know what that means. I'm going to blab too much. <laughs> all right. You know, I like my quotes here. Hope is an expensive commodity. It makes better sense to be prepared. And uh, uh, very, very true, folks. I mean, you know, hope, it's not just an expensive commodity. Oftentimes, hope doesn't always work. Things don't always turn out the way you hope they do. You know, you can hope this doesn't happen. You can hope this does happen. Uh, however, doesn't it make much more sense to plan and be prepared for that kind of stuff? And, uh, you know, kind of the theme for my day besides my ending theme. Uh, let's get into precious metals real quick and uh, see what's going on. Markets are kind of... I'm going to say up a little bit today. I'm liking the strength we're seeing. It's incremental and uh, backed off a little bit. Let's see, a, a low in 1968, a high at 1980, kind of sitting in the middle there right, you know, right now at 1974. Um, I suspect uh, that it, it's going to be up overall. I can't see any smackdowns happening from here out for the rest of the day, but you never know. Uh, you know, the day is still new. Uh, silver at 2552. Uh, sitting in that mid-25 range and uh, a low of 25.47 and man she was bumping up there at 25.88 uh, same as yesterday uh, trying to touch into that $26 range and uh, by the way got a very interesting uh, comment from our chart guy thank you chart guy by the way I read that this morning and uh, we'll get to that here uh, when I go over yesterday's video and yesterday's comments but the uh, chart guy seems to think that uh, we're on in the takeoff zone right here on silver and that uh, once it does take off man we're in a stratosphere here uh, but we'll see what happens here and let me read that in a little bit uh, platinum one of the metal most unloved metal out there it seems right now i mean look at it sub thousand dollars you remember when platinum was two thousand uh, dollars not too long ago well it was a while back ago i guess 2008 the last time it was that high uh, however industry was doing real, real well uh, i mean if you think about it 2008 uh, 2006, 2007, 2008, prior to the economic collapse, which uh, uh, we probably should have saw coming, but uh, prior to the economic collapse, uh, uh, industry, manufacturing, car sales were epic. Uh, and maybe that's why we were seeing platinum at a $2,000 level. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, the charts here. And I put up a platinum chart today too, a, a more of a long-term chart. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, listen, 974 is low. I think platinum even hit as low as 950. Uh, interestingly a lot, n enough, um, I looked at the chart, and do you know, and I, I don't know how I missed it. Maybe I was just so busy with gold and silver at the time. I wasn't paying attention, but uh, do you know that gold, uh, platinum actually hit a low of $700 or the mid-700s? Uh, we'll get into that in just a moment when we look at the charts. Um, what am I trying to say with platinum being really low? Hmm. Well, I think what I'm trying to say is that I think being an unloved metal, and there's, there's always a saying is that, you know, what is that uh, Rothschild saying, buy when there's blood in the streets, that kind of deal. Or, you know, and there's other people that believe you know, when no one else wants it, when it's just, you know, uh, uh, um, the price is really super low, it seemingly nobody wants it, uh, that's the best time to buy it. It sure seems like that's the deal with platinum right now. Not so much with silver because, I mean, take a look at the premiums on silver are insane. Silver is in large, large demand right now. I was going to say super huge, but uh, all right, I'll say super huge, super huge demand. 
and uh, uh, gold as well, not quite as much as silver. Silver seems to have a huge investment demand right now, not quite sure. Manufacturing probably as well, even though uh, uh, a, a consistent manufacturing demand, uh, even though d uh, manufacturing is probably off substantially. Well, let's take a look at the 24-hour uh, charts and see what's going on here. Uh, with gold, uh, again, these incremental move upwards. Uh, you get these little monkey hammerings down right here, but I think, you know, if anyone has noticed one thing in the last three weeks, you've noticed that I've not used the term monkey hammer near as much. <laughs> so, And I kind of noticed that myself. And why is that? It's because we just haven't seen it monkey hammered down uh, with any success uh, as of yet right now. Let me move this mic over here a little bit. If any of you noticed a little blip there, I had to uh, move to a different room because the lawn guys were here. Uh, so, well, anyways, let me... Uh, let me uh, take a look at this 24-hour uh, chart where, again, we haven't seen any monkey hammer. We've seen these slingshots, but we haven't seen it get monkey hammered down and, and stay there for any length of time. Um, I think those days may be over, but, you know, knock on my wooden head, you, you don't know uh, with these... Uh, uh, with the COMEX markets and these crooked markets that we have out there. Uh, so take a look at the uh, bid price right now or the 24-hour uh, chart on gold, which I'm going to do. Let's look at this. There's our black line. And, of course, we can see the markets kind of drop back a little bit. Uh, they're showing gold at uh, 1968. And, uh, by the way, discrepancies in gold prices, too. I mean, take a look at this, 1968, uh, 70. And uh, let me go over to my CCE prices, which I'd like to use. Let me update that as well. Uh, there you go. And it looks like it is dropping down uh, 1965 right now and 2538. Uh, so maybe we are starting to see the uh, monkey hammer right now. But again, I think it's this. You see this, what we saw yesterday and what we've seen a pattern. It's really not been monkey hammered per se. It's what I've been calling like these slingshot actions. It gets, it gets uh, pulled back like this uh, substantially and it just kind of bam, it, it, it jumps, you know, and slingshots forward real fast. And perhaps that's probably what we're seeing again here today. It's been a pattern I've noticed for two or three weeks. Uh, I've probably used the term slingshot more than monkey hammer lately. So uh, uh, that's, I think that's probably what we're seeing right now at this, at this moment here. Uh, again, I didn't refresh the page here. Uh, since I restarted this video. And uh, let's take a look at the silver charts. I'm going to do a refresh on that. I think we're seeing the exact same thing. Take a look at that, yesterday's markets. And again, it's a pattern that's repeated itself over the last two or three weeks. Primarily, both gold and silver, this pattern has been repeated in the uh, New York Crimex markets. But remember, Crimex is open 24 hours a day. That's what the New York Globex market is. It's also part of the CME Crimex family, uh, part of that family the mob. <clears throat> so I think we're seeing that monkey hammering down right now. Ah, I said it monkey hammering, but not really. I think unless it stays down there and kind of moves into the sideway motions, I'm going to say it's probably going to slingshot, slingshot, slingshot back upwards. Like uh, again, the pattern that we've seen repeated over and over. I think if you took these 24 hour spot uh, silver prices or you look at the graph and you look at the specific time frame here for the last two or three weeks, you'll see that this action downward and then sharply upward again. Um, with that said, let's move into, again, we've got a repeated pattern here. You know, I've been a little bit confused with the gold and silver action here. Uh, I've expected to see, uh, you know, it get knocked down to the, based on knowing that the big commercial shorts uh, uh, would prefer to be at $23 per ounce to cover a lot of their positions, I believe, uh, or hopefully do that uh, without taking huge losses. Uh, I, I been, have been expecting to see that $23 mark, but we haven't seen it. Uh, what does that mean? Does that mean that these big commercial uh, banks uh, that, you know, that uh, uh, dominate the, uh, uh, or, you know, collusively dominate the uh, silver market uh, with the uh, approval of the CME group and the CFTC, <clears throat> uh, does this mean that uh, they're going to be taking some huge, huge losses here coming up uh, because of this? Uh, I mean, look at BOFA, too. If Bank of America does indeed own that, uh, uh, which is, we're pretty certain they do, uh, not in fact actually certain, Ted Butler is absolutely positive they do based on reports and what he can see. Uh, Bank of America is now into the uh, precious metals derivatives in a huge way. They're in that 23 bucks an ounce. If silver continues to climb like this, what kind of losses are they in? Is somebody going to bail them out? Because, I mean, is it 
it's significant losses, folks. What I, I'm confused. I'm torn between two places. I'm torn between understanding the crookedness of the COMEX CME markets and how these collusive commercial banks are able to drive the price down uh, to cover their asses, uh, but they haven't done it yet. What's up with that? <clears throat> I mean, is this it for them? I mean, are they going to finally take it up the hiney on this? Uh, so, uh, anyways, uh, same, you know, same gold and silver. But let's move out of that. I think we're in a bubbling territory right now. Um, and again, chart guy uh, made some really good uh, observations uh, that we'll get into a little bit here uh, when I get into comments about uh, yesterday's videos, which is right about here, folks. You see my bar here. You can kind of get a feel where we're going uh, just by looking at this bookmark or the bookmark bar up here. Uh, once we get to here, I'll start talking about the chart guy stuff. Uh, let's take a look at... Uh, uh, man, where did I put it? Oh, you know what? I don't see it up there. I had a chart for platinum, and where did it go? There it is right there. Um, I wanted to talk about platinum, and I, had, I don't very seldom show the platinum chart at all. Uh, however, oh, I think I was asking earlier, when was the last time platinum was in the $700 range? Well, here, man, to much, much to my surprise, or either my lack of memory, I've forgotten, uh, March 30th, 2020, look at that, the price of platinum at $718, uh, and gold was what, um, on, on 2020, gosh, gold was nearing that $1,700, $1,800 mark or something like that, uh, over double, over double, man, uh, and platinum still has never broken out of that territory, uh, $700, $900 range, uh, but when was the last time, let's see, platinum has been low, wow, quite some time, but take a look at this. Uh, the last time we saw uh, platinum prices uh, this low were uh, prior to 2006. Right there, 2006, 2008, man, we were in peak bubble territory with platinum at 2000 bucks an ounce. However, this is prior, I think March, it shows March, uh, uh, February, March, where is it? Uh, where is our high right there? Uh, right around February, March, May. This is before the collapse. I think the collapse was in the October time or, 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 or latter part of the year in uh, uh, 2008 when we saw the economic or the great financial collapse, okay? Um, so <clears throat> platinum was at a high of $2,000. But if you think about it, we were really at the exuberance of our economy, the height of our economy uh, uh, prior to that. I mean, uh, luxury cars. I mean, people were buying new cars. There were car ads. You could lease a car, at least a BMW for $239. I mean, there was, I mean, manufacturing. There was money everywhere. And then came this gray bar. Then came the 2008 collapse. Take a look at platinum. Just took a total shit pretty much there. Meanwhile, gold and silver were doing quite well. Gold and silver did not take the shit that uh, platinum apparently took here. Again, I don't look at the charts too much. However, after that, manufacturers seemed to pick up. You know, they were pumping a lot of money into the system. Uh, Ford, GM, all those car companies got bailed out. Uh, manufacturing picks up, does kind of well, but never quite recovers, as you can see here. And then we get into uh, 2020, uh, which is you know, funky territory when you look at the chart right here. But again, I think based on uh, gold nearing the $2,000 mark and silver nearing the, you know, well, not nearing anything, not nearing its all-time high yet. Remember, gold has hit its all-time high, what, two, three times? God, I've forgotten uh, <clears throat> already. And silver has only hit its all-time high twice. Uh, and the most recent time would have been around the uh, uh, over a decade ago, 2012. So uh, platinum just seems super, super cheap to me. Now, does does this mean, do I think that platinum is going to take off anytime soon? Um, no, I really don't. Uh, however, I think it really comparative to gold and silver as a precious metal and as one of the noble metal, noble metals uh, that uh, it is undervalued in my opinion. But again, a lot of that has to do with uh, not being as loved as much as silver and gold. Uh, a lot has to do with manufacturing uh, in general disinterest in people not talking about it. However, I see it as a great buy at these levels, uh, sub thousand dollar level. I really see it as a great buy. Uh, will it turn around quickly? Probably not. Probably not until this economy uh, uh, mixes up a bit and we hit some lows. I mean, we got to hit the lows before we get, get to hitting highs again, folks. Uh, we haven't seen any lows yet. So, uh, And I'm just talking about the econ economy in general and the uh, stock market, equity market. So the market in general, everything. We just haven't seen the lows. It's been artificially kept alive, uh, this patient. And uh, once this patient hits the lows, uh, I think we'll see a rebound in manufacturing. And then platinum also, I think, will be a great deal. But I can't help but think that platinum at some point, people are going to recognize how cheap it is. 
as an investment as a precious metals and start piling into it as well. Uh, just my opinion and thoughts. I think it's a great deal. There's some good, uh, and the premiums aren't too crazy on platinum right now as well. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, the uh, stock market here. Um, I think the only reason the stock market hasn't taken a giant shit is because, again, you know my theory. I've been saying it for a while. I believe that uh, the plunge protection team, which is a real thing, folks, it's not made up, uh, <clears throat> which is made up the Fed, the Treasury, and uh, the President's group, have been artificially propping up the Dow Jones, SP, and NASDAQ, preventing it from flopping into a complete tailspin, all right? So I believe they've been, I believe, I believe they've been pumping a lot of money into that market just to keep it uh, uh, stabilized to some degree. You know, I think the only thing that these idiots learn uh, from 2008 was don't let it crash, don't let it crash. They never learned, uh, or don't let the patient crash, right? They never learned anything about actually maybe healing the patient, perhaps. Maybe, <laughs> well, anyways, I'm not going to get into that. You know my opinions. Uh, but uh, markets are kind of sideways as they have been. Uh, nothing exciting about the commodities markets, SP or NASDAQ, and I don't think there will be. In fact, at some point, uh, maybe they're going to have to let it fall uh, quite a bit. Uh, Bitcoin not really catching any bid at all, just kind of sideways like a glorified money market at some point. Uh, the uh, uh, volatility uh, really hasn't been there much. I mean, Listen, I don't own any Bitcoin. Don't know a lot about it other than, to me, it's kind of like a digital fiat to some degree. Uh, yes, and I think it is probably better than the U.S. dollar. Don't get me wrong, to some degree, to some degree. The only advantage of the dollar is that, you know, you got it in your hand. You know, there's in your hand is a lot different than online. So I'm always an in-hand kind of guy. But uh, uh, Bitcoin is kind of just... You know, it was supposed to be the next gold, and it uh, hasn't been, and uh, it doesn't look like it will be the next gold. I mean, but how do you dethrone something that's been a, like gold and silver that's been around for 5,000 years? You don't do that in a decade. Bitcoin, it just doesn't happen, man. You ain't that special. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at uh, JM Bullion. Uh, what's the best deals out there? 100-ounce bars. I have these in stock. I can beat JM Bullions on uh, J.M. Bullion. J.M. Bullion. Again, I use J.M. Bullion because they are the 800-pound gorilla out there. Trustworthy company. I don't think you're going to ever wake up and, and see that they absconded to Central America with your money. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's one of the companies out there I trust and I like. Uh, and they're owned by uh, a, a public company, which is uh, Amark. Amark is a publicly traded company. They own Silvertown, all right? So they can mint their own shit and actually beat prices of a lot of people because of that. Uh, but no less, uh, as a local dealer in South Florida, if you live in my area, I can beat their prices on J.M. Bullion and the other guys mostly as well. Uh, let's take a look at what, well, best deal is 100-ounce bars, 10-ounce bars, and 1-ounce bars. I have them in stock, and I can beat J.M. Uh, Bullion on 1-ounce and 10-ounce bar prices pretty handily. So if you need those, but the premiums are stiff. 100-ounce bars are the best deal. Sorry to say that. Uh, you know, another good deal out there is silver 40%. Uh, I'm not sure how hard it is to get right now. Let me see if they've got that online here. Uh, people have been asking me about sterling silver. Should I buy sterling silver? Oh, God, not unless it's the last stuff you can buy. And uh, the war nickels, I wouldn't really buy those either, folks. All right, 40% Kennedy half dollars, as low as $9. I'm not kind of sure what kind of premium that is. Uh, I'll do the math for you tomorrow. God, I keep promising I'll do the math, but you know what? It looks like 40% is a really good deal. You know, it's U.S. mint made. It's not as high content as 90% uh, U.S. coin. Uh, what are they getting for a bag? That's a half a bag. Uh, they're getting $8,000 for a bag, a little bit over eight grand. That's actually a good deal. There's 295 ounces of pure silver in a full $1,000 bag of uh, uh, silver Kennedy halves. All right, so just do the math, 295. Let me see what I do up here. Uh, 295 times 2550. Um, I should have uh, known that. It did uh, 2550, but it looks like uh, uh, $7,500 a bag. So $7,500 a bag. What are they getting for it? That's not a bad deal, actually. That's not a bad deal. That's probably the best deal pound for pound that uh, anyone has on silver out there right now is 40% uh, silver. The only problem with 40% silver is that the buyers of it, a lot of dealers across the country, even the wholesale buyers, 
are a little fickle when it comes to what their profit margins are. A lot of times, you know, they're like, <clears throat> hey, I don't want to buy it unless I can make a dollar or two an ounce on it. Uh, so, you know, there's the downside of 40%. It's just not as lo hardly, hardly loved at all. Uh, especially by retail investors. But wow, it looks like a really cheap price. Best deal JM has, and I'm sure I can beat that price too as well, pretty easily. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna do a little more investigation, but I, you know, when we're starting getting into five buck plus for one ounce generics uh, and, and 10 ounce bars and, and 100 ounce bars are getting in that 350, four, five dollar, maybe you gotta start looking at stuff like this. Uh, another good buy might be some foreign silver coins. Again, I'll discuss that at some point. I got to start looking at this stuff to help you guys out uh, make better deals. Well, where we go from here, you know, I've got to go into politics and economics a little bit, but man, we all, and again, people often say, well, you know, some people get a little turned off by it when I start discussing it. Some people, and, and usually they probably don't watch your video more than once because there's someone else they'd rather listen to, which is cool. Everyone, you know, everyone has a, uh, there's a saddle for every ass. So <clears throat> I'm not the saddle for every ass for sure. <laughs> but uh, uh, I believe economics has a, and politics, especially politics, has a huge, huge uh, uh, impact on the price of gold and silver, precious metals, and everything else across the board. So if you're talking about precious metals and prices and where you think things are going and where you think, you know, why gold and silver is going up, you really have to talk about this stuff. And But you know what, the, the thing is, is that the, the big basic point that I could give you is you don't have to watch the news every day. If the news is just trending negatively, generally speaking, in an economic and a political sense, you, you know, you're in the decline. You're, we are in the decline of the empire, uh, quite frank, frankly, folks. Uh, of this particular, not of the U.S. Constitution, not of America, not of the American people, not of our lands. We are in the decline of a corrupt, uh, 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 boy, how do I say this? We're... <laughs> Uh, without going, we're in the decline of a, a corrupt system or a corrupt groups of people, corrupt ideas and ideology that is running our country and other countries and their agencies. Corrupt, corrupt folks. They don't follow their constitutions. We're not following our own constitution anymore, all right? Uh, I mean, look at this best and final offer, Elon Musk. Why is he offering to buy? Uh, Twitter. Well, most likely, you know, listen, he's a multi-zillionaire, so, uh, <laughs> you know, one could say, well, he's got his motives. He wants just to get richer, but I kind of doubt that. Um, he's kind of a, a loud, outspoken person, which is one of the things I respect about him. Loud, outspoken, not afraid to say what he thinks, and he seems somewhat intelligent, you know. Um, and again, don't confuse uh, um, billionaires with intelligence, folks, all right? Uh, but he is an intelligent with what he did and what he's done. Just because you're intelligent in one field doesn't mean you're intelligent in the other. I just wanted to put that caveat in there. Uh, but no less free speech. It's all about free speech, all right? And uh, that's something that uh, all countries across the world have gotten worse on. America used to be the uh, uh, leading light on free speech. We used to be the people that said, all right, say what the hell you want. I don't care how despicable what you say is. It doesn't mean I have to listen to it. it doesn't mean I can't make fun of you, but you can say it. I don't care what form you say it on. Now, can you yell fire in a in a movie theater? No. I mean, that's. I mean, you can't create harm, uh, physical harm, or the potential of creating physical harm. You know, like that. You know, or telling someone to jump off a cliff or I'm going to shoot you. That's not free speech, okay? Uh, but uh, it, it, you know, even if they can't see the gun, <laughs> that's not free speech. All right. But, 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 but. Uh, uh, they're violating the rights all over, and there's a certain group of people in this country uh, which are really twisted in the mind. They're really fucked up people, man, that, that push for this kind of thing. Uh, speaking of effed up people, <laughs> okay, there's one of them right there. And gosh, isn't that an amazing story? But I'm not going to delve into this stuff. I'm just going to, let me just roll down here, uh, look for stuff that has a more significant uh, uh, 
impact on, again, prices of gold and silver. U.S. retail sales grow slowest in 13 months as online spending plunged. That's not good, folks. That's also a good sign that the economy is in a tailspin. And where do you want to be when the economy is in a tailspin? You want to be in gold and silver. Why? Because nobody's buying stuff. And when no one is buying stuff, it means nobody's producing stuff. And when you're not producing stuff, it means no one's paying taxes. No one's paying uh, 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 FICA taxes. No one's paying their Social Security, which is kind of irrelevant here. But no one's paying sales taxes. No one's paying income taxes, all right? No one's paying uh, uh, taxes on uh, 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 trucking and gasoline because the economy comes to a standstill, which means that the government is screwed, which means that they have to pay more on treasuries or try to find people. It, it is a spiral downward, okay, which is good for the price of gold and silver. You can't, you know, again, how can you not talk about this stuff and look at the stuff and think what I'm thinking or what I'm saying here, which is what I'm thinking often, all right? Uh, uh, speaking of credibility, I talked about credibility yesterday, and uh, what was it? integrity? I talked about integrity yesterday, and how. Um, uh, speaking, God, here's two great examples of uh, integrity. <laughs> uh, uh, integrity was a video yesterday. We're going to get into that in just a moment. I'm going to answer some questions, and we're going to get into chart guy. So we're going to talk about chart guy here, uh, and his comments on where silver's going. I mean, uh, pretty exciting stuff uh, according to uh, chart guy. And uh, my gut feeling tells me I don't know when. Uh, but my gut feeling has been telling me for quite some time that uh, this day is going to come again, and I'm not worried about it. But things are bubbling up right now. But speaking of integrity, our ne the video I'm going to talk about yesterday, uh, here's people that absolutely lack integrity. All right, this is why we are in the situations that we're in. Uh, but you can find that all around the world. You can't just blame these two. And integrity is lacking in the UK, Canada, uh, uh, Australia, uh, you name it. Uh, New Zealand, they're not going to get out of this one either. All across what we once called the free world. I'm making quotation marks with my hands. The free world. All right. Uh, we're in trouble, man. Uh, I hope come elections worldwide, worldwide, um, providing that we don't have integrity issues with the elections, I think worldwide, man, we better make some changes, folks. Um, and it's not us versus uh, our brothers and our sisters and our neighbors and the people we disagree with politically. It's us versus some really stupid, evil people. Um, all right? And the other side, you know, the, the blue and the red party eventually, people, blue and red supporters eventually got to get together at some point and realize the real enemy is not each other, it's the people that are supposedly working for them. All right? That's the real enemy. Uh, two trillion means blah blah blah. Okay, all right. <laughs> two trillion wise market has increased potential instability. Uh, gold versus an openly failing, cha uh, changing world. Good stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna say that I'm not gonna read the whole video here because again my throat's not 100% still, and uh, uh, I like it better when you folks read this stuff. I'd like to kind of give you suggested reading. I used to call it homework, but nobody likes homework. I don't even like homework, but suggested reading. Uh, Matthew Pippenberg, one of my favorite writers out there, works for goldswitchland.com. Honestly, I don't know what they do, but <laughs> uh, uh, he writes some good stuff. I like what they write here. And of course, if you live in uh, the neighborhood of Matthew Pippenberg, you know, if they have a shop somewhere in the United States or Switzerland or wherever, uh, and you live in their, their town, man, that would be the, the shop that I would go to for sure. Uh, but no less, uh, you know how I feel about online sales. Uh, try to keep it local if you can, folks. But God, if I lived in Matthew Pippenberg, I, I'd close my shop if he, if he was here and uh, go visit his shop all the time. <laughs> all right, great. That's how much I like his articles, all right? Uh, this is gold versus an openly failing, changing world. Uh, it's in ZH, but type this into your browser right here. And uh, you'll come up with it uh, again. Authored by Matthew, authored by Matthew Pippenberg. I'm going to hit that. Uh, there's the gentleman right there. Hats off to you, sir. Always good stuff. I read from you. And uh, uh, he makes he talking about the threat to the economy, inflation, or the Fed, or both. Okay. And he goes into look. He's taking a look at that chart that we discuss here all the time. Uh, hold on. No, that's assets. Total assets. I thought that was the buying power of the U.S. dollar. Uh, I should know better. If that was the buying power of the U.S. dollar going up like this, I'd sell all my gold, <laughs> silver, everything. I'd buy dollars. Uh, bra brainless bravado rather than honest transparency. Man, some good stuff here. Uh, I I'm going to be candid versus uh, candor versus uh, uh, fantasy. Um, again, highly recommend that you read this article. Uh, you can go to Gold Switzerland and read it, or you can go to CH and read it. But it's uh, gold versus an openly failing 
uh, uh, slash changing world. Great article. Highly recommended on my part. Uh, yesterday's article was about integrity. If you have integrity, nothing else matters. If you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. Okay. It's all about integrity, folks. I mean, and, and uh, uh, I couldn't hammer that home enough yesterday in yesterday's video, but, uh, you know, regardless of who it is, we respect integrity. And integrity is something that people do even when you're not around watching them. Okay. You know they're good. All right. Uh, and that's just something we don't have in our economic markets. It's just something we don't have in our political markets. It's just something we don't have in our media markets, all right? We don't have integrity anymore, folks. Integrity is about zero, all right? So, uh, anyways, uh, it, which is a shame, but it's a time for a change, time for a change. We need to stop fighting each other. Red and blue supporters need to stop fighting each other. People that uh, don't necessarily agree on, on, uh, 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 on sexual issues or whatever issues, religious issues, uh, we can find a compromise in between, but you got to realize is we are not each other's enemies, all right, in any way, shape, or fashion. The, our real enemies are the people that are supposedly representing us. Uh, and that's across the world. That's not just the U.S. Anyways, let me move along here to uh, yesterday's video. I'm going to take a sip of coffee here. And I had to just check to see to make sure I was recording. I've done that before. <laughs> I did a whole 45 minute video one time that I forgot to hit the record button. Gosh, I can't tell you how frustrating that can be. Give me one second here. Any of YouTubers ever done that before? Uh, let me know. <laughs> hmm. All right, sorry about that. Didn't mean to give you the silence there. I had to move from the other room a little bit earlier. The damn lawn guys, man, with those blowers. You know, when a lawn company comes out with an electric blower and electric equipment, Oh, they're gonna they're gonna change the whole market. <laughs> uh, Clayton, all right. Politics and integrity, you can't fake it. The farther you will make it. There you go. Lauderdale is a lovely place. J I, uh, J one Wildcat. Hey, hey, happy birthday. Oh no, I hit twenty six today. Okay. Hey, well that was a compliment. All right. No, the silver price hit twenty six. <laughs> uh oh, I'm getting loopy. All right. Um, Brexit. Uh, I didn't even take any cough medicine today. Oh boy. All right. Uh, Brexit, who cares? It only matters if you're selling or buying. Most people buy gold and silver and hold it. That's true. Uh, revalued currency, I'm glad you're considering it. Uh, um, our currency, I've always considered revalued currency temporary because, oh, I like that temporary. Uh, hang on, we will see a flip, maybe polls, everything. Uh, hang on, we're hanging on, man. I, I have faith in this country. I have faith in in all of our, our people eventually getting coming to the idea that the wool has been pulled over their their eyes left the left and the right uh blues reds middles i think the people in the all over the world are starting to understand that they can't trust the media they can't trust their governments and they can't trust the economic system the people that are running the system uh and rightfully so we've been lied to so many times rightfully so uh, but as far as revalued currency um i believe that uh uh, the currency has uh, 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 already been revalued. We've been revaluing it since we went off the gold standard. I mean, basically, uh, that's revaluation. You just don't see it. Uh, it's just the declining value, uh, the dollar, you know, you know, the value of the buying power of the dollar, just a declining buying power. Uh, I was going to look for the chart, uh, the CPI chart, but I showed it yesterday. Hey, thanks for watching Temporary. Appreciate it. You can hear I'm losing my voice just slightly here. Uh, yeah, silver popped that $26 mark. Chart guy, who we're going to get up to here in a moment, talks about that, that he thinks it's going to pull back to 25 and then all bets are off, folks. Uh, you better have your bets on the table. Uh, appreciate that comment, KGB. The Scourge, great show. Thank you very much. Kansan, we claim Eisenhower. Eisenhower, man, what an amazing guy. I don't know how well he loved he was back in the time, but uh, and it's hard to... Uh, uh, see a general, you know, a military man as a, uh, a president, but uh, some of the stuff he t talked about, especially that quote yesterday about uh, integrity, uh, and uh, also his uh, speech on the military industrial complex, which had a great impact on me early in life, all right? Um, uh, what a guy, what a guy, really. Um, and the cheap looking bar from Silvertown, I got to admit, those cheap looking bars, they are cheap, and uh, they had them at like two dollars, and if you Two dollars and ninety cents over. You can't beat that. Uh, I couldn't even beat that. But again, that's it, one advantage JM has is that they have sole access to certain products because they own the mint. They own Silvertown Mint, so they're the only ones that are going to get that bar. And they can blow some people out of the water sometimes uh, on price wise. 
Uh, but on most all products, a good local dealer should be able to beat them. Um, kind of, and again, when they do those low prices, they call them sales. They're called lost leaders. They're not really sales. When they're slow and they have a lot of product, they'll put thing out for sale. And they're not, they're not, they're doing it, you know, not necessarily for you, but what it does, it creates a new customer, draws a new person in. Uh, uh, you know, they get a new person on their mailing list. You know what I'm saying? A new person to call. So there's all kinds of good reasons. They're called lost leaders in the industry. You throw one product out there super cheap just to get uh, uh, some customers to know you. It's just, again, a way, a form of advertising, really. Uh, Silverliner says, uh, oh, uh, uh, Helios Tassalavo. I'm sorry, I couldn't do it today. Uh, yep, can't argue with it. Armageddon. Well, I don't think we're at Armageddon, brother. Um, I don't think we're ever going to see Armageddon in our lifetime, but, uh, um, you know, tough to say. I mean, if you're a poor Ukrainian out there, you know, a poor person living in that country having to deal with the uh, uh, idiot Ukrainian government and the uh, 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 the warring uh, uh, Russians on one side, yeah, you know, who cares? They're both your enemy at that point. Uh, silver Liner says, uh, Brian, a good remedy with a few drops colloidal silver. Oh, I did that, Silver Liner. Thank you for mentioning that. And uh, ah, Jack Daniels. Didn't do Jack, but did uh, some other stuff that was uh, equally as good. <laughs> Have you seen how much the stock market has listed the value of the dollar? They must be basing it off the price of oil, but the dollar is not oil. It's paper. There you go. Thanks for mentioning that, Scott. The true, true, true. Silver Loving Lou. Thanks, Brian. Glad you're feeling better. You too, sir. Thanks for commenting. Uh, Scott Nolan Argus. Um, hey, good deal, man. Uh, I think you probably got a good deal on your Platinum Eagles, although they're a little bit pricey. Platinum Eagles are pricey. Cool product, though. Uh, as long as you're not paying more than $120 an ounce, $150 an ounce premium, which is probably still too much. It's 10% on Platinum. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, Platinum does have a stiff premium sometimes. Uh, glad to have myself back. Thank you. Uh, I'm 11 and 19 hours ago. Joey, uh, as well. Yeah. That is true. The hardest pill to swallow is finding out the people you care the most about care the least about you. But that's not always true. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a heartbreaking case that happens occasionally. But you know, you know who your friends are. You know, you really do. In your heart and your gut, you always do. And as long as the AM, uh, yep, no 8 AM uh, uh, masturbation criminal manipulation today. <laughs> criminal masturbation on the markets. Uh, all right. Invisible Stacker, thanks for commenting. The true price of silver is increasing. Uh, Stephanie Gates, once the manipulation has ended, um, uh, I think the path will do so be closed legislatively wherever value set as remains constant. Interesting here. Uh, I'm curious if legislatively, you know, if the commodities market blows up entirely, man, uh, and they have to bail out the CME or something like that, you better be damn sure there's going to be some institutional uh, and some uh, governmental changes there for sure. Uh, and there's, anyways, uh, I'm not going to go into it. Thanks for commenting, Stephanie. Gary, uh, there you go, working on a section gang for 39 years. Uh, uh, forgive me if I sing the song, uh, I'm, I've been working on the railroad. <laughs> not everybody, not all the young folk out there know what a section gang is. Uh, hey, Gary, that's awesome, cool. Thank you for your service there with uh, keeping those rails out there going, keeping the lines going. Uh, thank you, and uh, uh, yeah, keep hitting those local coin shops, man. Uh, thanks, Gary. Uh, all records, yes. Never $1,500 gold again. Because uh, I asked yesterday, what do you thought the low was on gold and silver and platinum? I think we're in for the low on platinum, I think. Man, uh, you know, nine, 900, uh, I don't see sub 900 happening. Uh, and I think uh, you're right, Al Cords. I think uh, 1500 I don't think we're never going to see that again. Um, Thirty-five to 40000 Woo. I, I kind of hope not. I don't mean to say that. I mean, that sounds exciting, but, uh, you know, if, if it's $35,000 gold, that means a loaf of bread's $140. Mm, I don't know, man. Uh, I, slowly but surely, we'd like to see it go up. Thanks for commenting on records. Tree Climber, Coin Tilt. <laughs> thanks for uh, the comments there. I appreciate that. Uh, there you go. Isis, thanks for uh, uh, Barbarina. Thank you for your comment there. Uh, history, are, are, are we awake yet? No, we're not. Sorry about that. I've, I'm on my second cup of coffee. I'm still not awake. America, man, the country as a whole, people as a whole, we need about several more cups of coffee before we all wake up together. And again, left, right, blue, red, we're all in this together. When they finally all realize, all parties involved, that it's uh, representatives are the issue, not their brothers and sisters that they disagree with. Uh, when they realize that, the world will change. Uh, Donald says, seen silver at four, seen at 50. Um, 
Government going to be mad if you have it. <laughs> okay, Don, I, I can't argue with that. I've seen silver at 4 and 50 I think we're going to be hitting the $50 mark, though, soon, Mr. Desno. Uh, John Schnee says we are saved by grace. Yes, we're saved by the grace of, uh, of uh, a lot of things, sir, including faith. Um, Joshua says I don't see gold hitting 1750 again and uh, 2250 again. Um, wow, 1750. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could see a 1750 and a 22, and maybe even less, in a complete economic collapse. I saw it in 2008 when the market collapsed, gold and silver tumbled 20, 30 percent, some crazy number, but you couldn't buy it. It was a paper uh, price. The paper price of gold and silver just tumbled down in 2008 with everything else. But the real price of gold and silver for real bullet bars and, and coins, you couldn't buy it for that level. Uh, deliveries were out two months. Premiums got not unlike right now. Kind of weird. Kind of kind of a weird uh, coincidence here. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty heavy, Joshua. I think you might be right though. Maybe. Uh, last living old cowboy. Yep. You put the lime in the coconut and you drink them both up. That was Harry uh, Nielsen, right? Harry Nielsen. If I remember, God, I remember when that song was on the top top ten list. Uh, salt water. Uh, I've been buying sterling silver for spot price or less. Do you think this is a good strategy with premiums so high? Or should I stick with buying normal silver products? I'm not planning on selling anytime soon. Kind of want to take it. I really appreciate. Hey, I appreciate it as well. Um, um, you know what? Sterling silver. I wouldn't be buying knives, forks, and that kind of stuff right there. You're going to take a bigger hit. If you're going to go out and buy sterling, go out and buy foreign coins. Sterling foreign coins, which would represent uh, stuff made in Panama. A lot of the Franklin Mint uh, made uh, Franklin Mint made a lot of silver coins uh, for uh, all different Caribbean islands and South American countries and stuff. Buy that stuff in sterling before you buy forks and knives and stuff. The problem is, is when you go back to sell forks and knives and that kind of thing, the scrap levels are way different than what you're used to paying in the bullion market. So I mean, you could get, you could take a hit of ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty percent. You could take a hit of twenty percent on scrap markets. Okay. Even in the wholesale area, almost you know, not 20%, but you could hit take a hit of 20%. So you're looking 10 to 20% in that range uh, uh, that you're probably going to lose on the sell side. Uh, so, but again, I'd stick with coins because I think you have a better shot of getting a little bit more percentage for that. Uh, thanks for commenting, Saltwater. Uh, Big J says platinum is staying low because everyone's betting it's a recession. Yep, that's true. Can't argue with that, sir. Good, astute comment there, and uh, can't argue with that either. But I think, you know, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of blame to go around for everyone. You know, the issue I think we've had for decades now is the separation of American people. You know, and uh, uh, they got us fighting amongst ourselves. You know, they got us fighting. Uh, you know, red cousin against blue cousin, or red cut brother against blue sister. I mean, it's just wrong. It's wrong, but it's purposely done that way. Because if you're focused on them, you're not focused on the people that are creating the mess, is creating the problems. But again, I could go on that tour a long time. Said it earlier. All right, finally, dun 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 dun. Chart guy's probably rolling through this, going, Jesus Christ, shut up, Brian. <laughs> start talking about. Uh, forgive my 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 word there, but uh, uh, start talking. Come on, man. All right, chart guy. Thank you very much, hundred or bust. I appreciate this. I I think. Well, again, I am far from a chart expert. Never said I was. Uh, but chart guy's got some uh, good, good solid data here and information. I truly, truly believe this man knows what he's doing. Um, all right, chart guy. Per couple months ago, posted we would trace out the last turning point, wave E, which would consist of a zigzag pattern, consist of one leg down, wave A, followed by a move up, wave B, and technically, I'm sorry, finally one last decline down on a wave C. All right. Uh, I know this sounds technical, folks, but it, it's not so much. Uh, uh, follow through. Uh, this zigzag correction would commence once wave D was in place, which require the market to touch at $27, which we did uh, at uh, 27.25 on March 7th. Okay. Hmm. Sorry about that. My throat's getting a little dry. Uh, chart guy says since March 7th, we have been in the last shallow corrective phase as stated. This will be the shallowest of all corrections since the market will want to remain position near the upper trend line of the co contracting pennant. And again, folks, I know some of this stuff is technical for you. I'm not a chart expert. I mean, I understand basically what he's saying here, and I understand the, uh, the, the whole premise of this, but follow through. Uh, this allows less distance. And by the way, 
Forgive me for interrupting. Chart guy's going to say, Chart guy's probably hearing me read this and goes, God damn, Brian, finish my stuff here. But by the way, uh, if you're unfamiliar with terms and words, uh, uh, contracting pennant, for example, and uh, let's look for minor wave, the larger degree waves, investopedia.com. Uh, is, is the far best, best site to learn this stuff. Don't just gloss over If you're reading an article in the Wall Street, which I don't really read anymore, Wall Street Journal or other economic publications, and it's a term you're not familiar with, investopedia.com is absolutely the best. And by the way, I didn't get paid for that. Uh, I just wanted to pass along some really important knowledge here that don't gloss over words. If you're not familiar with what you're reading, just pause for a second. You're on the Internet. It takes you two seconds. Go look the word up and learn it. All right? Uh, so this allows distance for price to travel to break the resistance area, which will happen in a big way, Distrim demonstrating a ridiculous show of strength, power, and explosiveness that will be sustained into Q1 of 2023. This is very interesting, so more or less what Chart Guy is saying here is that uh, uh, he believes that once we, once we hit the, well, all right, here, I'm going to go down here because he, he breaks it down here. Uh, the minor wave of a large degree wave B is now complete, as I believe I hit my target of a low of 24s. It's bouncing on wave B. Just th think of the numbers here. Ignore the word wave. Uh, up towards 2625. One shallow decline to complete a minor wave at 25. Uh, chart guy believes that we are at this. Uh, uh, again, let me finish up here before I keep saying, <laughs> interjecting here. He says, Brian, do you remember these numbers I posted when we were still basing out at 22 in the beginning of February and calling for a rally to 27 plus, followed by a zigzag wave E to 25, uh, question mark. Uh, yes, I do kind of vaguely remember some of this stuff, sir, but I do remember uh, the numbers and that you were feeling that once we had uh, uh, pulled back, hit a certain number and pulled back again, that we would be uh, back into the stratosphere. And that's kind of what he's saying here. Uh, so chart guy finishes off, say now, when the last bottom drifts back down around the $25 support level, possibly by the end of April, well, that's all she wrote, folks. It's now over. Checkmate. The short squeeze is coming, and it'll be popcorn time. Well, I did post this at the top of the page for yesterday's video, folks. Gold and silver will never go down, question mark. Uh, I pinned it. Chart guy, thank you very much, sir. From your lips to the precious metal god's ears, um, uh, I hope this is true. Again, you know, I've got, you know, as in, like, I feel like an abused child with these big commercial shorts that have constantly smacked these markets down. So I can't help but feel suspicion, but uh, no less. Uh, I, I, I have no doubt in my freaking mind, you know your game, sir. No doubt in my mind. So, uh, from again, from your lips to uh, uh, whoever's listening's ears, I, I hope this is the case. Hey, thank you, Chart Guy. Really appreciate it. And again, folks, make sure you read this on yesterday's videos in the comments. It's pinned to the top. Good stuff. Uh, well, I'm going to close this video out. Um, I'm thankful that I feel well. I'm thankful for all the uh, uh, well wishes I got over the last week when I wasn't feeling well. Uh, I do apologize for the videos, which are a little bit not subpar, but not kind of the normal things I'd like to do. And uh, I was just I couldn't talk. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to end it on my uh, uh, my theme of the year, my uh, my quote of the year, which is think for yourself, question authority, and most of important is question yourself, question your own uh, narrative in your mind. Where did you get it from? Is it yours? Did the school teach it to you? Did the media teach it to you? Was it your parents? Was it a combination of everything, society in general? Because, you know, the best place to start questioning things is in your own mind. And then other things kind of start to open up more clear to you. Uh, well, at the very least, think for yourself and question authority. Have yourself a great folks, uh, great folks day. <laughs> Have yourself a great day, folks. And uh, listen, this is Brian Kuzmar. I'm a South Florida dealer in precious metals, rare coins, also do jewelry, artwork, antiques, silverware, collectibles, and other things. Um, we have two different businesses here, but uh, this video is primarily based on the precious metals end of it. Uh, so if you live in South Florida and you want to buy or sell any type of precious metals, we're here 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays. We're a brick and mortar only, so we don't do any online internet business. And we encourage you, if you don't live in our area and you can't do business with me, uh, I encourage you to go out and find a good local dealer. Keep that money local, folks. Do the best you can. You have to have to drive an hour to find a good dealer. Even if he's a tiny bit more than the online guys, try to keep that money local. Well, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.